Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Rocky1279 channel on this December 4th day of 2014. We're going to do our Bible readings for today, so let's pray. Father God, thank you for allowing us to get into this word on today in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, as we get ready to go forth in your will on today, give us the strength to have guidance in your will on this word on today. Let us meet, meditate on our word. Let us keep your word. Let us have guidance in your word in the name of Jesus. And we pray this prayer now. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Great to have you with us. We're going to do our daily Bible reading. Today's reading is going to be found in Acts, the 24th chapter. We're going to read Acts 24 through the 26th chapter today. So we're going to read three chapters of Acts. And the first parable we're going to be reading is in chapter 24. This is where Paul appears before Felix. Paul appears before Felix. Let's do the reading of God's holy word. Now after five days, Ananias the high priest came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullus. These gave evidence to the governor against Paul. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began his accusation, saying, Seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity is being brought to this nation by your foresight. We accept it always and in all places, more noble Felix, and with all thankfulness. Nevertheless, not to be tedious to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. For we have found this man a plague, a creator of dissension among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and we seized him, and wanted to judge him according to our law. But the commander of Lysias came by and with great violence took him out of our hands, commanding his accuser to come to you. By examining him, him yourself, you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, maintaining that these things were so. Then Paul, then Paul after the governor had nodded to him to speak, answered in as so much as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation. I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because you may ascertain that it is no more than twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone nor inciting the crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city, nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things that are written in the law and in the prophets. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. Now after many years I came to bring alms and offerings to my nation, in the midst of which some Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with a mob nor with tumult. They ought to have been here before you to object if they had anything against me, or else let those who are here themselves say if they found any wrongdoing in me while I stood before the council, unless it is for this one statement which I cried out, standing among them. Concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged by you this day. When, but when Felix heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, When Lysias, the commander, com comes down, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. And after some days, when Felix 
came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish. He sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often and conversed with him. But after two years, Portius Festus succeeded Felix, and Felix, wanting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. Okay, now we're in Acts, the 25th chapter, verses 1 through 22. This is now, this is Paul appearing before Festus. Let's read. Now, when Festus has come to the providence after three days, he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. Then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul, and they petitioned him, asking a favor against him that he would summon him to Jerusalem. While they lay in ambush along the road to kill him, but Festus answered that Paul should be kept at Caesarea and that he himself was going there shortly. Therefore, he said, let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. And, and, when, he had, and he, when he had remained among them more than 10 days, he went down. He went down to Caesarea and the next day and the next day sitting and the next day sitting on the judgment seat. He commanded Paul to be brought. We had come, the Jews who had come down from Jerusalem stood about and laid many serious complaints against Paul, which they could not prove. While he answered for himself, neither against the law of the Jews, nor against the temple, nor against Caesar, have I offended in anything at all. But Festus, wanting to do the Jews a favor, answered Paul and said, Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and there be judged before me concerning these things? So Paul said, I'd stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews, I've done no wrong as you very know, well know, for I am an offender or have committed anything deserving of death. I do not object to dying, but if there is nothing in these things of which these men accuse me, no one can deliver me to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, you have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. And after some days, King Agrippa and Bernice came to Caesarea to greet Festus. When they had, when they had been there many days, Festus, when they had been there many days, Festus laid Paul, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, "There is a certain man, there is a certain man left a prisoner by Felix." About whom, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, when I was, when I was in Jerusalem asking for a judgment against him, to them, to them I answered, it is not the custom of the Romans to deliver any man to destruction, before the, before the accused meet the accusers face to face, and has the opportunity. And has the opportunity to answer, has the opportunity to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. Therefore, therefore when they, therefore when they had come together without any delay, the next day I sat on the judgment seat and commanded the man to be brought in. When the accuser stood up, they brought, they brought no accusation against him of such things as I suppose. But had some questions, but some, but had some questions against them about their religion, their own religion, and about a certain Jesus, who had died, 
who Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I was uncertain of such questions, I asked whether he was willing to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. But when Paul appealed to be reserved the decision of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I could send him to Caesar. Okay, then Agrippa said to Festus, I also would like to hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, you shall hear him. Paul speaks to Agrippa. This is in Acts, the 25th chapter, verse 23 through the 26th chapter, verse 32. And it reads, so the next day, when Agrippa and Bernice had come with great pomp and had entered the auditorium with the commanders and the prominent men of the city at Festus, command Paul was brought in. And Festus said, King Agrippa and all the men who are here present with us, you see that this man about whom the whole assembly of the Jews petitioned me, both at Jerusalem and here, crying out that he was not fit to live any longer. But when, but when I found that he had committed nothing deserving of death and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. I have nothing certain to write to my Lord concerning him. Therefore, I have brought him out before you and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that after the examination has taken place, I may have something to write. For it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to specify any charges against him. Don't it seem like something that is going on today? I feel like highlighting that. Okay, we're going on to chapter 26. Then Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered, for himself, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused by the Jews, especially because you are expert in all customs and, and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from the first. If they were willing to testify that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I live the Pharisee. And now I stand and I'm judge for the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. To this promise are twelve tribes earnestly serving God day and night, hope to attain. For this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead? Indeed, indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also, this I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the and many of the saints and many of the saints I shut up in in prison, having having received authority from the chief priests. And when they and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blasphemy and being exceedingly enraged against them. I persecuted them even to the foreign cities. While thus occupied as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commissioned from the chief priest at midday, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those and those who journeyed with me. And when and when and when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a vo voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goat. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are 
persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declare first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and them to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting repentance. For these reasons, the Jews, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, Therefore, having obtained help from God, to this day I stand witnessing both both to, to small and great, saying, saying no other things that than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead, and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. Now as he now as he thus made his defense. Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. For the king before whom I also speak freely knows these things. For I am convinced that none of these things escape his attention, since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost altogether such as I am, except for these chains. When he had said these things, the king stood up as well as the governor and Bernice and those who sat with them. And when they had gone aside, they talked among themselves, saying, This man is doing nothing deserving of death or chains. Then Agrippa said to Festus, This man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. All right, guys, that concludes for today's reading. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for allowing us to get into this word of today. Give us the strength to hear your will and give us the guidance to live by your will on a daily basis. Now, Father God, as we get ready to go forth into your will and have guidance in your will, let us live by your will and meditate on your will on a daily basis. And we pray this prayer now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Well, in a few minutes, we'll be doing Tic Tac Doe and we'll be celebrating Wake Martin's Dale's 81st birthday in honor of playing Tic Tac Doe today. But for right now, this is Roddy1279 signing off saying be safe, be careful, take care of everybody, and stay blessed. Goodbye.